Welcome to today's coding lesson. This lesson is part of the previous three or four other lessons. We have posted a number of our YouTube videos about these lessons. We look at using the new text-to-speech features, which is found in Scratch, the upgrade of Scratch. For outsiders, I am Erin Bradley, a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School. Brian Evan Primary is a South African school promoting coding in if you find it difficult to follow this lesson, I'd suggest that you watch some of our earlier postings. You will find that we do repeat a lot of what we do to try and reinforce the learning that's involved. The Brian Evan Coding Group is open to all learners. We meet twice a week as an extra mural. Currently, we get together on a Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. In this lesson, we are using Scratch to explore speech and translation. We organize these colored blocks which are used to make the program work. Together, these colored blocks fit together and the arrangement makes the whole working system. The color and shapes of these blocks are meaningful, it shows how they work, and it helps us to see how they fit together in our program. You could compare these coding blocks to Lego pieces, or puzzle pieces that come together. You'll get to know these different code blocks and shapes as you use them more often. And that's why we must emphasize the need to practice. In addition to the color, you'll see that the different shapes also help you to make sense of how they're organized. The different colors help you to find the appropriate piece, so you'll know what you're doing. And the different colors also will show you the different classes, that's what type of box they are. Some of them you'll see relate to movement or motion. And in this example, you can see that this block is placed in the coding section. The first block in the blue motion category moves our sprite 10 steps. This other one, with the twirly arrow, rotates or turns 15 degrees. The white circle showing that we can change this as to fit the logic of our programming. You've probably noticed that there's a whole lot more to discover. And I must urge you to go about exploring as much as you can. Get to know what the different colors can do and try to construct some sort of working system or logic. You'll find it very exciting looking into the blocks and seeing what they can do. You can see the different categories, motion, looks, sound, events, the control, sensing, operators and variables, all listed over here, are all shown by different colors. It's a great layout. Here is the button above the stage. It's used to provide more space for the stage, so we can resize the stage area. So if I press the middle button, the stage gets larger. The first button makes the stage get smaller. So when you're going into Scratch, you can make the workspace very user friendly and make yourself very comfortable. Organizing your work, workspace is very important and it should be done. These three buttons above the stage do ask, do provide you with some help. So at this point of time, our stage is comprising a sprite and you can see our character is Avery with the background, the basketball court. I am going to click on Avery, our sprite. And you see this blue coloring around the sprite, that icon or button. That just shows that Avery is active. Blue coloring around the sprite icon has its own set of code blocks that are found in the middle of our screen in the code section. Let's just make the stage smaller so that you can see the code section a lot better. It's the combination in the middle of all those colored blocks. You can see it a lot better now, those colored blocks. And here we have a collection of code blocks. And you see that the combination of these runs the code blocks. If Avery, our sprite, is clicked, all of those blocks will run together. We know this is connected up to Avery. How do we know if these blocks are connected up to Avery? They're connected up to Avery because she is still the active sprite. You can see this on the bottom right-hand side. Let's click on the right-hand button above the stage to have the stage dominating the work area. Let's look at what clicking on Avery will do. So we want to see a set of code blocks that runs when we click on her. We want to see what the collection of code blocks is going to do. So I click on Avery and she has a speech bubble saying something. She is saying the Zulu translation is Unogwaja. So clicking on Avery brings the code we are seeing on the stage. There is a block that triggers that code when the sprite is clicked. I clicked on Avery as you can see and can you see that Avery is mostly saying something different in Zulu. She teaches us that the Zulu translation. We now have the reference to a rabbit. She says the translation of rabbit and now gives the Zulu translation, translation of rabbit. See, she gives us what she knows, Unugwaja. Our next is again giving elephant. You might remember that for that to be, is, it's in Dlovo. So Avery has chosen elephant for the second time in the set of Zulu English expressions. So I'm going to close the stage.
Now, if I click on the click flag event, this is similar as it's triggered by a click on the flag. The first block of code is going to be, re be read, which is this forever loop. Forever loop looks orange, and the forever loop runs all the blocks within it, from the top to the bottom. On reaching the bottom, it'll return to the top, and it'll go from the top all the way down to the bottom, and then restart and continue endlessly. This continues playing until the user stops the blocks of code from playing. So we'll return to these blocks in the course of our lessons and the forever loop. You've probably been wondering how did we get this background, the basketball court. So let's just show you how to do that. You find this button which will choose the background to view all the backgrounds that are available. Many of you already know how to do this from our previous lessons. The background makes your Scratch program far more interesting as it places your sprite in an interesting environment. We know that in systems, various objects act within that system. Take the heart. It acts as part of the cardiovascular system. Grade 5 and 6 should know this from their natural sciences. As you can see, if we look at the backgrounds over here, there's a number of headings. The categories that help you to easily find the right background. Here is fantasy, music, sports, and the list just goes on and on. I'm going to choose the beach in Rio as our backdrop. Avery should be teaching us Portuguese. So let's just imagine that she's living in Brazil. You should know that the capital city of Brazil is Rio and that they speak Portuguese in Brazil. This area is the workspace where you do all your work and make all your programs. You can see the code, the costume and the sound tabs. I will not go into those areas. And we'll concentrate on the coding blocks that are already present in the coding section that were brought in from the previous lesson. Now, to access the code involves looking inside at the organization of these coding blocks. You will do this by clicking on the See Inside button, allowing you to explore the code in the projects. That will get you to explore the combination of these code blocks, which make the whole program work. Remember, it's the combination of these code blocks that makes the working logic. Every single Scratch project works as a system of blocks. So let's look at the code blocks and make that makes up this Zulu translation at the top. The forever loop runs code continuously. And we find other loops that run blocks in different ways. And one of them is the repeat loop, which we'll show in a while. We will read the first block in a forever loop, which is the blue ask block. And an ask block is deriving some sort of information from the user. The yellow arrow at the bottom of the forever loop, as you can see, indicates that after reading the last block of code in the loop, it will return to the top. And this will go on endlessly. The ask block has a question. What do you want translated into Zulu? We will change that into Italian in a minute. It also brings up an input box with a check in it. This input box is a place where the user types in whatever English they want translated. Now that ask block is placed into this forever loop. We want our program to be an Italian translator and the appropriate wording therefore should be changed from Zulu to be Italian. And now we bring in the say block, which waits five seconds after saying something. The five seconds gives the user enough time before the speech bubble disappears. So the speech bubble will show for a short time, five seconds. You can adjust the five seconds to whatever is suitable to you. The speech bubble gives us Zulu. As the translate within the say block takes a variable answer and makes it Zulu. Answer is whatever the user's just typed into that input box. To change the Zulu option to be Italian, we're going to click on the drop down and scroll to find the Italian. We click on the option Italian to change the translation from Zulu because we want it to be Italian. At this point, whatever is typed into that input box is going to be Italian. It's going to be an Italian translation. We have a hidden variable which is called answer and that's going to hold whatever is the Italian translation. We want to store all of our Italian translations with English and there we're going to need our scratch list to store all of these Italian and English translations. 
we want to show our scratch lists. Showing or making the scratch lists visible will help us a great deal to see whether the scratch lists are feeding in the English and the Italian translations. So we check the scratch lists in the variable section. The checkbox indicates whether these variables should be visible or not. You'll see there's a tick in the box that indicates that the scratch lists are visible. Making the checkbox unchecked or blank indicates that they are not going to be seen on the stage. They will then be vis invisible. As you can see, the two scratch lists are now visible on the stage area. They have a whole list of translations in them, both Zulu and English, and they're also numbered. The scratch lists are numbered, which is a very helpful aspect. We will not make the scratch lists visible when playing the translator. The visibility of these scratch lists is only to see if our translator is working properly. So we're only using it for testing purposes, the visibility of the two scratch lists. We can reset the size of the stage with these three buttons. These three buttons are found above the stage. And it's very important that we try to make our workspace as comfortable as possible. I've already touched on this before. In this view, you'll see that the scratch lists are visible on the stage. But I want to change the names of the Zulu scratch list. It should be now called the Italian list, as it's going to be storing Italian translations. So it is only right to call it an Italian list. Right clicking on the scratch lists gives us the option to rename the list. That'll be the right button on your mouse. I could have deleted the Zulu scratch list and made it a new scratch list called Italian list. But anyway, this is how I'm going to be doing it. So we can see better now that I'm going to go over some of the main points to help us to understand this a lot better. Now, when you see a bit of code with the click flag event, when you see this flag, that's showing us what we are clicking on the flag to start off. This coding block is usually what we use to start the game. Our second coding block was a loop. What type of loop? A forever loop. Now, what exactly is a forever loop? We read our code block by block. We read the first block, then the second block, and it runs consecutively as one would read lines. We start the code at the top and we read the first line and the first block of code. The say, or the purple colored block, will make a speech bubble. And the purple colored block will show the speech bubble for five seconds. It will be shown coming from our sprite. Whatever we typed into the input box will be translated to Zulu. That gray oval piece of code is whatever we typed into the input box. Though we need to change that to Italian. So what we're going to do is we're going to go drag. We're going to look in this option box and see if we can find Italian. There you go. We have the Italian and we click on it. We choose the Italian option. And now we just add the answer to the English list. And we add the translated answer, which is now in the Italian, to the other list. That's what these two add blocks are all about, the orange blocks. Both of these would be found in the variables section of Scratch. Lists are considered to be a sort of variable. I want to just show you the two Scratch lists with all the translations in them. So I'm going to go to the stage area and just make everything a lot bigger so that you can see it far more clearly and just see how the lists are numbered from one to the last member of the list. So you've got all these lists starting at one and the highest number would be the last in the collection. You can see here that it's indicating that the length of the list is nine. That means we have nine translations in our list. There's nine in the collection. I want to just show you how to get rid of all the items in the lists 
because we want to clear these lists out. We want Italian and English. We don't want to have the Zulu. So we're going to take out the Zulu and the English. We just click on these check boxes or these little crosses and that should take them away. This definitely is not the best way of all the items in the list. The best way to do that is probably to do it programmatically. So to use some sort of code, which I'll show you in future lessons. There you can see I've taken away all those items in the list. The lists are shown to be empty. So our sprite would have really nothing to say at this stage. But we will be feeding a whole lot of bits of information into the lists. Italian and English translations. Let's focus back on the code section. So we're going to look at the code window in the middle over here. Once again, I'm going to minimize the stage area, make it more comfortable for us to work in. As a programmer, it's very important to always think about your workspace. The three little buttons above the stage allow us to make the area far more workable. You can see that the coding section has become a lot more visible. We bring in this collection of blocks. You can see that they are made up of two orange add to list blocks. The first orange add to list block is putting the English in the English list. Whatever we typed in the English is going to go in the English list. And the second, the second orange add to list block is going to be putting the translation of whatever we typed into the Italian list. So it's going to translate it into Italian and put it then into that list. I'd like to just show you how that works. And the best place to show this would be the stage area. At the bottom, you can see the input box where we're going to type in our input, where we're going to type in our English. That will then be translated. On the right hand side, you can see our two lists and the one is still reading Zulu and the other one English. It should read Italian, but we'll just leave it like that. This is where you type in whatever we want in Italian. Our scratches, Italian and the English listings all come in from here. These scratch listings are part of what we call components. They are storing this information in the lists, which I have already showed. Avery is asking a question to prompt the user to fill in something. It gives some understanding of what must be done. She's asking us a question and then straight away there's an input box which allows the user to straight away know what to do. It almost says type something in. I hope that you can see the connection with the blocks of code in the middle of the screen. That's found in the click flag event and the stage because there's a connection between those two. It's fascinating just trying to decipher or trying to understand what this is all about getting to the bottom of what is the coding logic. I'm going to be moving on with the click sprite event. The click sprite event refers to a mouse click on the active sprite. Now the active sprite has code blocks all connected to it. In this instance, Avery is our active sprite. And you can see she's our active sprite with the blue color around the thumbnail at the bottom. The sprite thumbnail is shown by my arrow on the bottom right hand side. We have a repeat loop, which is a control. It'll run whatever is within it five times. In this case, it is the code blocks within it that will run five times. On the first run through the loop, we set a variable. And this variable is going to be a number in the list. The number in the list will change on each run through the loop. It's a random number chosen by the computer. We will have a number in the list as a number from one to the last item in our list. The last item in our list is one at the end of the whole list. So if I gave you the list of numbers like zero, one, one, two, three, five, which some of you might know is the Fibonacci sequence, the last item in that list would be the five. Five is item six in that list. On clicking on the flag, my sprite asks, what do you want translated into Italian? 
I'm going to type what is your name. I want to know what the Italian form of what is your name, what that would be. What is your name? And there we have the Italian translation. Cometto te chiami. Those words that you've just typed are placed into the list. The come te chiani goes into the list. And she asks again, what do you want translated into Italian? And each new edition just adds to this list, representing, in this particular case, Avery's knowledge. And that makes our list just grow more. And the items in it just add up. And we have a larger list through this process. My name is Erin Bradley and I'm a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School. My interest is to promote a love of coding, feeling that this sort of mindset will do our young learners a great deal. My thoughts are that this is the way of thinking that will greatly enhance the educational possibilities. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, which involved building the Scratch Translator program. I hope it has proven to be interesting, if not useful, enhancing your ability to work with code. I urge parents who'd like to get their children involved in coding to start off with Scratch. It's a wonderful platform and it's something that will give the very basics and it will help your children in this regard. The systems dynamic aspect that comes in as well is something that can, the thinking skills involved go way beyond coding, the rationality, the logical aspects and the systems thinking needs to be explored a lot more. Please do subscribe if you haven't already.